Hello students, welcome back to your botany class and today uh, I would like to start with a new unit, your unit 2 in your textbook which is one of the most important uh, chapters or unit uh, in your whole of your textbook. So today I would like to start with a molecular basis of inheritance which is uh, in chapter 6 of your textbook. So uh, today I would like to, we'd like to discuss the search for genetic material. And all of us, we are uh, familiar and we know, we have a uh, knowledge that DNA is the genetic material. And a genetic material is one which stores the genetic information and it carries all the information for the characters of an individual. And also it transfers that information or that uh, it carries that information and transfer it to the next generation. So that is what we know about genetic material. But prior to uh, our knowledge prior to the discovery that DNA is a genetic material, it was widely thought that uh, it may be the proteins, it may be the proteins uh, which is the genetic material. So many biologists thought that, or many geneticists, they thought that it is the protein and not DNA which is the genetic material. Why do they think that the protein is the genetic material? It is because proteins, because of its diverse nature, because they have a function to perform as enzymes, they have a function to perform as hormones, they have to uh, function to perform as antibodies, and so also they are the structural and functional unit of our body. So uh, biologists thought that it is the proteins and not the DNA which is the genetic material. And by uh, 1926, uh, experiments were being conducted and they narrowed down the experiment to the chromosome level where DNA is, uh, uh, where, the, where it consists of the DNA and the proteins. So, um, the first experiment was uh, done uh, even before 1928, even before Griffith, but the first uh, evidence or uh, the first big major step was done by Griffith in 1928, which he called it as the transforming principle to show that it is the DNA, to search what actually or what exact is the genetic material. So uh, Griffith in 1928, he conducted his experiment using the uh, bacteria uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae, which is responsible for causing pneumonia in mice. So uh, Griffith, he took two strains of bacteria uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae, the S strain and the R strain. The S strain, when it is cultured in colonies, uh, when it is cultured in a culture medium, it produces shining uh, uh, smooth colonies. Why does it produce smooth shiny colonies is that it is and, uh, capsulated, it is covered with a mucus uh, coat and that mucus coat is made up of polysaccharide and that uh, gives its protection against the WBC. The mucus coat which surrounds the estrogen, uh, it enables it to be virulent, it uh, enables it to be pathogenic and it causes pneumonia which protects it from the uh, WBC. While the R strain, uh, when it is cultured in a culture medium, it does not produce any shiny or smooth colonies because it lacks the mucus coat. So the difference between the R strain and S strain is that uh, the S strain, because of the presence of uh, uh, mucus coat, mucus polysaccharide coat, it is virulent, it, causes patho it is pathogenic and causes pneumonia. While the R strain, which uh, lacks the mucus coat, uh, it is avirulent, it is non-pathogenic and it does not cause uh, pneumonia in mice. So these are the two strains of bacteria which Griffith, he took it for his experiment. So in his experiment, he took the S strain and injected into the mice and the mice developed uh, pneumonia and the mice died. Because this S strain is virulent, it is pathogenic. While in the another experiment, he took the R strain, the avirulent strain, and injected into the mice, the mice did not develop any pneumonia, the mice did not develop any symptoms, and the mice survived. In the next experiment, he took heat kill S cells or heat kill virulent strain and live R strain or live uh, virulent strain and injected into the mice. So, what the mice uh, uh, showed was that it developed symptoms of pneumonia and the mice died. So, Graphite at the end of the experiment, he uh, took the extracts from this dead mice and he found that this R strain was converted into S strain. So uh, 
was converted into S strain and this R strain when it was converted into uh, S strain it developed the mucus coat uh, it develops uh, the polysaccharide mucus coat and it became virulent and as such it caused pneumonia and the mice uh, developed pneumonia and the mice died so uh, he found a mixture of even uh, so he concluded that in this experiment, in the final experiment, which he injected a mixture of heat kill S cells and R cells, he took, he, at the end of the experiment, he found out that he got a mixture of live S cells, R cells, and a mixture of even the virulent strain. So he concluded that there is some material in this S there is some material in the S strain which could not be killed by the heat and that material could transform this R cells or R strain into S strain making it virulent and causing the mice to develop pneumonia and die. So, um, but on the other, uh, on, uh, but he could not define the chemical nature of that material. He concluded that there is a material, there is a material which could transform this R cell into S strain but he could not define or he could not uh, describe exactly what is that transforming material. So many biologists, they could not accept his uh, experiment on this. So uh, in the year 1944, Avery, McLeod and McCarthy, they continue with the same experiment. They continue with the same experiment of graphite to conclude to define the chemical nature of the transforming principle. So um, they took the extracts of this S strain, or they took the extract consisting of DNA, consisting of RNA, and consisting of proteins. So when these fractions, when each of these fractions were cultured in a medium containing R cells, in a medium containing R cells, they found out that in this medium containing RNA and proteins, only R cells were obtained. But when this DNA was introduced into a medium containing this, a mixture of live R and S cells were, a mixture of R and S strains were, both these two types of strains were obtained. So he continued with this experiment and then he started using the enzymes, DNAs, then uh, RNAs, and proteases. Proteases are enzymes which degrade proteins and RNAs, RNAs are proteins which degrade RNA and DNAs is the enzyme which uh, is responsible for degrading DNA. So when he introduced uh, uh, this different, uh, different types of uh, enzymes, DNAs, RNAs and proteases into this mixture uh, one by one, he found out that these RNAs and proteases does not affect the transformation, does not affect the transformation in the sense that there is still a mixture of R cells and S, uh, S cells. But when this DNA was introduced into the mixture, it was found that, that uh, there, the transformation was uh, inhibited and only R strains were obtained. So from this experiment, he concluded that the uh, biochemical nature of the transforming principle is the DNA and is neither the proteins nor uh, RNA that is not they are not the genetic material but he concluded that it is the DNA which is the uh, this group of scientists they concluded that it is the DNA which is the uh, genetic material nevertheless uh, many biologists still could not accept this uh, experiment so uh, Scientists, they continue with the experiment and the next experiment, the most notable of which was uh, performed by Hersey and Chess. Hersey and Chess in the year 1952, Alfred Hersey and Martha Chess, they performed the experiment using the bacterial phage to prove that DNA or to prove what is the exact genetic material of living organisms. So a bacteriophage is one which infects or which uh, attacks bacteria. And during the course of infection, this bacteriophage, 
they get themselves attached to the uh, cell of the cell wall or the cell of bacteria and it is only the genetic material which moves into the bacterial cell while uh, the protein god remains outside the bacterial cell. So a bacterial phage, uh, which is a phage, which is a virus which infects bacteria, consists of a, uh, a hep, which is made up of proteins and tails, by means of which it is attached to the bacteria and which is also made up of proteins. So within this, uh, the protein hep is the uh, genetic material. So during the course of uh, infection, uh, in, uh, during the course of its infection, the bacteriophage attaches itself to the bacteria by means of the tail, and these are also known as tail fibers, and they inject the bacteria, uh, they, they inject its genetic material into the bacterial cell. So now, once it enters into the bacterial cell, it takes control of the bacterial cell uh, machineries or the bacterial cell also uh, assumes that it is its genetic material and it starts replicating and they start producing virus producing various materials within the bacterial cell so once this bacterial cell produces uh, this uh, viruses the bacterial cell lyses and the viruses are released into uh, the environment so this is how a uh, bacteriophage infects a bacteria. So uh, in the experiment, Hersey uh, and Chess, they use radioactive sulfur and radioactive phosphorus. Why did they use radioactive sulfur? It's because this, uh, you know that uh, proteins are polymers, uh, proteins, the basic units of proteins are amino acids or proteins are polymers of uh, amino acids and this sulfur is a constituent of the amino acid methionine and cysteine. So, Hersey and Chess use the uh, radioactive sulfur. And why did they use radioactive phosphorus? This phosphorus is a component of DNA. So, uh, Hersey and Chess use the uh, radioactive sulfur and radioactive phosphorus. So they took two strains, they also took uh, two cultures of viruses. In one, they grew viruses, they cultured viruses containing radioactive sulfur and in the other, um, in the other culture, they grew viruses containing radioactive phosphorus. So now, uh, in the culture which contain a radioactive uh, sulfur, this radioactive sulfur becomes incorporated into the protein code becomes incorporated into the protein code because as I've said these proteins are uh, polymers of uh, amino acids and sulfur is a component of amino acid uh, cysteine and methionine so when they when viruses that were grown in culture medium containing radioactive sulfur they incorporated sulfur radioactive sulfur in its protein code and viruses that grew in medium containing phosphorus radioactive phosphorus it incorporated this phosphorus, radioactive phosphorus, in the uh, genetic material that is within the uh, head of the viruses. So now, these um, two types of viruses, one which contains radioactive uh, sulfur and the other which uh, contains radioactive phosphorus, they were now allowed to infect bacteria E. coli. The, these two types of bacteria were uh, allowed to infect uh, bacteria E. coli and of course in different cultures. So the, uh, the virus which contains uh, radioactive sulfur uh, is allowed to infect E. coli in one culture medium and the viruses which contain phos radioactive phosphorus is again allowed to infect E. coli in another culture medium. So as we have discussed, uh, these viruses during the course of its infection it allows only the genetic material to enter into the bacterial cell. So these uh, viruses, which contains uh, radioactive sulfur, infected, the, uh, infected this E. coli, allowing the bacterial, uh, allowing only the genetic material to enter into the bacterial cell, while the code 
the protein coats remain outside the cell. So also the virus which is allowed containing phosphorus, radioactive phosphorus is allowed to infect this E. coli and similarly the protein coats remain outside while only the genetic material enters within the bacterial cell. So now this genetic material enters into the bacterial cell and they started infected or they started taking control of the host cell machinery and they started producing daughter viruses within the bacterial cell. In both the cases, doctor, uh, daughter viruses were progenies were produced. And uh, what uh, Hersey and Chess did is that these protein codes remain outside the bacterial cell and it was removed by blending. It was subjected to blending and then um, uh, after removing the protein code, it was again centrifuge. And after centrifugation, uh, what did they observe is that they took out this uh, progenies and observed separately. And so they found out that this bacteria, these viruses consisting of uh, radioactive sulfur produces viruses which was not uh, having any radioactive substance in it. While on the other, uh, viruses which contains the radioactive phosphorus, when the progenies of these viruses were observed, were taken and observed, they were found that these virus progenies, they contain radioactive phosphorus. So now, uh, from this experiment, it was uh, proved that it is the DNA. It is the DNA which is present within the protein code. This is actually the genetic material because it contains the radioactive phosphorus and it is able to transfer or transmit that radioactive character again to the offspring. While on the other, uh, this protein code which contains radioactive sulfur remain outside the bacteria and since it did not enter the bacterial cell, it, is not, uh, it could not transfer that uh, radioactive character into the progeny and as such these progenies uh, from the bacteria which were infected with radioactive sulfur they did not contain any radioactive substance so this was a thumping uh, experiment to prove that this the genetic material is not the protein and uh, it is the dna which is actually the genetic material so from this experiment um, from all of these experiments, from, uh, from 1928 by Griffith, from uh, 1954, and from uh, 1954, conducted by the three experiments, and from uh, 1952, uh, conducted by Hersey and Chess, uh, the experiments were done to determine the chemical nature of the genetic material. And finally, it was uh, Hersey and Chess who could uh, prove, experimentally prove that it is the DNA. It is the DNA which is the genetic material and not the proteins and it is because of that they are able to transfer that information to the uh, progenies from the parent to the progenies and uh, it is stable. So these are the three experiments which prove that uh, DNA, not proteins, neither proteins, it may be diverse in nature but uh, it's not a proteins or it's neither the RNA which is the genetic material but DNA which is the uh, the uh, genetic material is being proved by these experiments. Thank you.